Good afternoon. Good to see you. We welcome each and every one to this, our Bible study, our Wednesday night Bible study. I want to apologize again for uh, us coming on a little bit late. And I'll tell you the problem. I, the problem is technology hates me. It hates me. Uh, I, I, no, I think it's the devil. Because we can have everything set up and ready to go. Uh, and when we get time, when it gets time to broadcast, we'll get, well, something will happen. And uh, that's happened again tonight. But you know what? The devil's not going to win. We're going to do this Bible study. I hope you're still listening. I hope folks are still watching. And I hope and pray this will be a blessing to you. I want to take just a few moments and uh, to, to give the announcements. And the first announcement I want to make is that uh, we are going to uh, uh, discontinue our study that we were doing on the kingdom until after this crisis is over. And the reason we're doing that is because uh, we have been uh, putting that on CD and we want to continue to be able to do that. So uh, we're just going to look at some, some Bible, we're going to do some Bible studies here and there in the Bible, little short Bible studies, until this crisis is over. Also, I want to thank all of you for the food. I'm going to tell you, our people have just showered us in love. When I think about the hard work and the expense that y'all have gone to uh, with this food, uh, man, I just it, it just humbles me. And I want you to know we love you all and we appreciate what you're doing. Thank you for the calls, for the text messages that you sent, for the gifts that you've given, and most of all, thank you for the prayers. We have felt the prayers. And the prayers have been so precious to us. Uh, we just appreciate it so very, very much. Without that, I don't know that we could make it. Uh, I also want to send out kudos to, to uh, Mike Lindale. And if you don't know who that is, it's the My Pillow Man. Uh, he stood up on national TV and told the nation about God. And I, it just blessed my heart. It was so good to see somebody stand up unashamedly and, and, and glorify God the way that he did. And Christians, the, the liberal news media is giving him a fit. But he's still smiling and he's still talking about Jesus. Uh, I saw him today and he was, he was said he was so glad to be able to tell people about his Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you, you need to take that old pillow you got from China and throw it away and and help, and, and spend some money on my pillows. And they are the best. We've got some. Uh, and we ought to support this man who stands up for the Lord. Also, I wanted to say, I wanted to tell you, folks, the, the obituary for Miss Johnson, they made a mistake. They neglected to say that the service was a private service. Uh, and the reason we're doing that is it's just family. And the reason we're doing that is uh, they are limiting us to 50 people. And by the time we get the family in, you're talking probably 35 or something like that or more. And uh, uh, it's just, we just can't see, you know, telling this one, you can come and this one, you can't come. Uh, so we decided to have uh, just a private service with the family. Uh, we would love, love to have our church family around us, uh, to have our friends around us. It would mean a lot, but uh, unfortunately, because of the coronavirus, they're limiting us to 50 people, and that's why we're doing that. Uh, also, one other thing. Thank you for sending in your, your tithe and your offering. And uh, most are sending it to Mandy's. But folks, the more secure place would be the church, to send it to the church. 
the church address is Cornerstone uh, Baptist Church, or excuse me, Cornerstone Church or Cornerstone Free Will Baptist, Box 82, Fountain, North Carolina, 27829. But uh, that's the end of our announcements. But I, I also, we want to go to the Lord in prayer. We want to remember our sick and shut in. Uh, and y'all know the names as well as I. We want to remember Brother Doug and Linda. I talked to Doug last night. We want to remember them as we go to the Lord. Uh, uh, Brother Don and Sister Trudy and also uh, Miss Katie and Mr. Marshall and uh, also uh, Brother, uh, uh, excuse me, Miss Dot and Brother Bobby. Uh, we want to remember them, our elderly Miss Jean and uh, uh, Mr. Page, and all of our elderly, remember Brother John and Miss Kay, uh, lift them up to the Lord in prayer, and all those on our prayer list. And I have got a call this afternoon from Linwood Lamb. He is having some physical problems, and we want to remember him and his family as we go to the Lord. And all those uh, that are on your mind and on your heart, and if you, and even though I can't hear it, God can hear it. Just call out that name. God will hear it, and uh, we will pray for them. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, Lord, we praise you. We thank you. Thou art so good and so gracious to us. God, you've been good to our people, good to our church, good to our friends, and God, we just praise you, and we give you the glory. God, we pray, we pray for everyone on our prayer list, so many names, so many needs, but God, you know each one, and God, each one is precious to you, and Lord, you know that need that they have. Whether, Father, it, it be physical or material or spiritual, God, we pray that, that in thy goodness, in thy abundance, that, God, you'd meet those needs. Lord, that you'd wrap your arms around those who need comforting. God, you'd bless those who need a touch from the Master, that you'd heal those, Lord, who are sick and hurting. God, you are so great. And we know, Father, that we can bring these needs to you. And God, Lord, you hear and you answer. In fact, Lord, you're able to do abundantly above whatsoever we ask or even think. So God, just have your way in each and everyone. Bless our church. Bless our people. God, I ask you also to remember Martha and her family, my family, as God, we go through this time of grieving. I ask you, Father, Lord, to, to bless and to help and to comfort them. God, we just praise thy holy name. We give you the glory. And God, Lord, we know as we lay this in your hands that, God, we're laying these, these people and these needs in nail-scarred hands, hands that are powerful, hands that love. And we know, Father, you do all things well. God, we thank you and we praise you. And we ask all of this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Okay, we're going to have now our message. And uh, fortunately, I've got a short message. Uh, don't, don't get up and leave. It's really a short message. But it's something that God laid on my heart. And I want to share it with you. Uh, I, I've entitled this, The Reasons for Sunday Worship. If you would, take your Bibles. And by the way, keep your Bibles handy because we're going to be looking up some scripture. So look with me in the book of Acts. The book of Acts chapter 20. The book of Acts chapter 20. Uh, and again, keep that Bible handy because uh, there are several passages of scriptures I want you to see as we go through this. Acts chapter 20. And we're going to read one verse of scripture, verse 7. And the Bible says, And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, 
ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech till midnight. I want y'all to notice that Paul preached to midnight. Now, I haven't done that yet, okay? But notice with me, it was upon the first day of the week. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise you. We love you. Again, Lord, we ask thy blessings. Now, Father, upon this message, I pray, God, as we study thy word, that, God, you'll open our minds and hearts, and you'll give us understanding. I pray, Father, Lord, that Jesus will be glorified. And, God, if there be one that's listening that's not saved, Lord, I pray you'll convict that heart, that, God, tonight they might receive Christ as their Lord and Savior. God, use this to make us better servants for thee. In Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. You know, in the message I pre preached last week, or taught last Wednesday night, when I was talking about the Christian response to, to the government, I made the statement that each local church decides how often they assemble together. And folks, that is absolutely true. As I said, there are, are churches that have uh, only a Sunday morning service and some that have maybe a Sunday morning service twice a month or once a month. Uh, so the local assembly decides how often we assemble together. You see, God's Word tells us to assemble, but it doesn't tell us how often to assemble. But tonight, I want to elaborate a little bit on that subject. Uh, because while God doesn't tell us how often to meet, folks, he does instruct us, I believe, in on one certain day that we should meet as a church, as a local assembly. So bear with me as we cover some old ground. But, but for some of you, it may be new ground. And I hope it will be a blessing. Let me give you a little bit of history to begin with. Go back with me to the creation. Beloved, when God created the heavens and the earth and all that is, he did so in six days. Folks, these were literal days. The Hebrew word used for day here is the word yom. And beloved, that word with a number added usually, in fact, almost always means a 24-hour day. And then the words evening and morning used over and over in the creation account, beloved, most certainly indicate a 24-hour day. So in six literal days, God created all that is. Now, once creation was finished, on the sixth day, beloved, Genesis 2-2 says this about the seventh day. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. And I'm going to read verses 2 and 3. Listen to what it says. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Now, folks, we read that. And certainly, God did not need to rest. I mean, this is God we're talking about. The Almighty One, the Everlasting One. He doesn't need to rest. But what God did was this. The Lord set a pattern for man. A pattern, beloved, that he should work six days and that he should rest and acknowledge the God who made all, who gives him all, on the seventh day. Now, this was taught, beloved, by the example that God gave here in Genesis chapter 2. But listen to what I'm about to say. 
It wasn't a command of God to man. Not yet, anyway. God wasn't commanding man to do that, but he was setting the example because he knew this was best for man. Now, go to the book of Exodus. You don't have to go there, but in your mind. Beloved, when God, yes, you do. Go ahead to Exodus chapter 20 because that's where we're going to be looking next. When God, beloved, led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he gave them, Israel, the nation of Israel, his law. And one of the Ten Commandments that he gave was to keep the Sabbath. Look with me in the book of Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. And we're going to look at verses 8 through 11. Listen to what it says. Remember the seventh day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy, thy man's uh, servant nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle nor the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and that all in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. So God, beloved, made it a law to the nation of Israel. Now it's important to notice, beloved, who these commands, these ten commandments who they were given to. Beloved, if you read this, they were given to the nation of Israel. They were not given to the Gentile nations. They weren't given to you and I, the church, but to the nation of Israel. But as we read the New Testament, listen to me, as we read the New Testament, every one of these Ten Commandments is repeated to the church, every one, with one great exception. The church is not told to keep the Sabbath day. In fact, in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 16, beloved, we're told to let no man judge us in respect of holy days or of the Sabbath days. Why? The next verse tells us, verse 17, because they were shadows. They were types of things to come. You see, under the law, beloved, Israel was to keep the Sabbath day. The seventh day, by the way, is Saturday, if you don't know, and I'm sure most of you do. The seventh day is Saturday, the seventh day of the week. But you see, Jesus, beloved, had fulfilled the, the law. It was the law of God, but he fulfilled the law. And now God deals with the church not by the law, but by grace, by grace. So we as Christians are under no obligation to keep the Sabbath. God didn't command us to. He commanded Israel to, beloved, and, and and uh, that's that's what uh, and that's what was foreshadowed by the seventh day, beloved. Uh, it was uh, well, it that which was fulfilled by uh, by the seventh day was was fulfilled in Christ, or was foreshadowed by the seventh day was fulfilled in Christ when Christ came. But however. Beloved, that great principle that God had laid out by working six days and resting one, that idea of taking, beloved, one day to honor the giver and creator and to worship him is still the right and good thing to do. So then, 50 days after the Lord's resurrection, the church was born. Beloved, as the church started, to begin with, it was made up entirely of Jews. You read the first few chapters of the book of Acts. They were all Jews. 
These Jews, beloved, were used to observing the Sabbath, to taking that seventh day to, to rest and to worship God. Now, as time went on, beloved, the, the door of salvation was opened to the Gentiles as well. Uh, and after a while, Gentiles became the majority of believers in the church. When we read the book of Acts, we see, beloved, that Jewish believers would go out on Saturday. They would go to the synagogues uh, to worship with the Jews, and they would use that to witness to, to the unbelieving Jews, to tell them about Jesus, to tell them that he was the promised Messiah, to tell them that that, that uh, he fulfilled the law, and through Jesus they could be saved. Uh, this was a common practice for Paul, if you read the, the book of Acts. But here's the question. On what day of the week did the early church gather together? I mean, not to witness to the Jews, but to worship God. To worship God. Well, God's word tells us in our text that we read, Acts chapter 20 and verse 7. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Now, when you read that, beloved, it sounds like worship to me. It sounds like they were worshiping God. And when do they do it? On the first day of the week, on Sunday, on Sunday. Listen to 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 16. 1 Corinthians, turn there with me if you would. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 2. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God had prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Beloved, why were they giving on the first day of the week? Because that's when they gathered together for worship, for worship. Later on in church history, beloved, uh, church history tells us that Sunday was the uh, the first Sunday, the first day of the week. That that the, it was on Sunday, the first day of the week, that the early church would gather and worship and rest before the Lord. Beloved, this has been the practice of the church based on these scriptures for as long as as we have record. So the early church. The Spirit-filled church, now follow me, changed the day to assemble and worship God. They changed that day from Saturday, the seventh day, which was under the law, to Sunday, the first day of the week, under grace. The question now is, why? Why did they change that? Well, I mean, why did they meet on the first day of the week instead of the Sabbath? Well, as I said, the church was never told by God to observe the Sabbath. Also, beloved, this was the church of the apostles. These apostles were spirit-filled leaders of the church. They were the ones that God used to start the church. So we can assume, beloved, that the Holy Spirit led the apostles to get the church to gather and worship, to assemble and worship on the first day of the week. But let me tell you, there are two main reasons that they met on Sunday. And I want you to understand those reasons. And by the way, these two are probably the reasons why the Holy Spirit led them to meet on Sunday, on the first day of the week. 
The first reason is because Sunday commemorated, listen, the resurrection of Christ. The resurrection of Christ. On that day, beloved, listen, I'll tell you what, on what day? On what day did Jesus arise from the dead? Tell me, telling you, let me ask you. On what day did Jesus rise from the dead? Listen to the gospel or the gospels concerning uh, the, that resurrection morning. Matthew chapter 28, verse 1. As it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mark chapter four, oh, excuse me, Mark chapter 16, verse 2. Very early in the morning, the first day of the week, it says, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. Mark 16, verse 9. Now when Jesus was risen early, the first day of the week. Luke chapter 24 and verse 1. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, John chapter 20 and verse 1, the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early. Folks, Jesus rose the first day of the week. He rose on Sunday. And oh, listen, what a special day that was for the church. You see, the resurrection of Christ was God's stamp of approval, God's stamp of acceptance for all that Jesus had done on Calvary. It was God saying, I've accepted my son's suffering and death for, for all your sins. And now by believing on Jesus, believing in his sacrificial death and resurrection, you can be saved. Oh, listen, don't you know, don't you know that the church wanted to commemorate that? Don't you know, beloved, they wanted to honor that? Don't you know they wanted to remember it, to keep it in their minds, at the forefront of their minds? So when the church was born, beloved, they would meet on the first day of the week, the day that Jesus rose from the dead. You know, I love Easter. I love Easter. Because even though the Bible doesn't command us to celebrate the resurrection, beloved, Easter brings the world's attention to that empty tomb. It, it brings the world's, world's attention to all that the resurrection uh, uh, is about. It brings their mind to his sinless, perfect life. It brings their mind, beloved, to him dying on that cross, bearing the sins of the world, bearing their sins. And it brings to mind the power of God and, and Jesus conquering death and hell and the grave. And I'm glad that we have Easter. The first day of the week, the Lord's Day. Listen commemorates the resurrection. Every Sunday, every Sunday should bring the resurrection to our attention. Every Sunday, the day he rose from the dead. Now there's another reason that they met on Sunday. And it was, I believe, an entirely biblical reason. And the reason is this. It's because Sunday is a type of the fulfillment of the shadow that's found in Colossians 2. Turn with me in your Bibles, the book of Colossians chapter 2. And I want you to look with me at two verses of scripture. I, I quoted uh, some of it a while ago, but I want you to see it with your eyes. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. Listen very carefully to this. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. 
which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Now, I want you to stop for just a minute and get a picture in your mind. You got a shadow. Beloved, the shadow is there. So what do you start looking for? You start looking for what's causing the shadow. And what was causing the shadow was the body of Christ. Christ was coming. Paul said that the Sabbath was a shadow of things to come. What does that mean? It means, beloved, that a shadow means a type, a type. And a type is an earthly example of, of a spiritual truth. So the Sabbath was an earthly example of something that was coming. What was coming? Jesus was coming to fulfill the law. Under the law, beloved, a person had to work for salvation. They had to work by keeping the law all of their lives. Now, if they kept the law all their life and never sinned, they would go to heaven. Beloved, this was symbolized in type by the work week. You see, they would work six days. That symbolized their life, a life of keeping the law of keeping the work, of, of the, doing the works of God. Then they would rest, beloved, and worship God on the seventh day. And that symbolized at the end of their life, their rest in heaven. Now, somebody says, preacher, no one can keep all the law all their life. I know. And so did God. And that's how, beloved, the law was a schoolmaster. It was a teacher. Paul called it a schoolmaster to us. You see, the law teaches that we cannot save ourselves by works, that we must have a Savior if we're going to be saved, if we're going to go to heaven. No one can keep, beloved, the law. Because everyone fails, beloved, everyone. And so we need a Savior. Enter Jesus, the God-man. Beloved, in the fullness of time, he came, born of a virgin, born without the taint of sin. And he, the God-man, lived a sinless, perfect life on this earth. In short, he fulfilled the law. He fulfilled it. And because he did, beloved, death had no claim on him. You see, the wages of sin is death. But Jesus never sinned, so death had no claim on him. So this just, perfect man, beloved, could go to the cross and could bear our sin. Because he had no sin. You see, if he had had sin, he would have had to have died for himself. But because he had no sin, he could go to the cross and bear our sin death. That whosoever believes on him might have everlasting life. You see, he, the sinless one, died in our place, in the sinner's place. Therefore, God, beloved, extends grace, unmerited favor to all who believe on him. Now get this. Under the law, you work for salvation by keeping the law, symbolized by working six days and then uh, entering rest on the seventh. But nobody could do that until Jesus came. Jesus fulfilled the law, paid our sin debt so that we might rest in heaven if we believe on him. Follow me. Follow me close. I wish I had a, one of my, my erase board so I could show you this. Folks, 
When we are saved, we are saved once we believe. The moment we believe, we are saved. So we enter our rest now, now. On the first day of the week, at the beginning, we enter our rest. And we work. We do God's will after we're saved the rest of our lives. And then we enter heaven. So we enter our rest when we get saved. And beloved, we work not to be saved but because we are saved. So by worshiping on Sunday, follow me now, by worshiping on Sunday, we are symbolizing that we have entered our rest now by receiving Christ, but we work the rest of our lives because he has saved us. Because he has saved us. By meeting on Sunday, Beloved, the early church changed the type. The seventh day was how it was under the law where you had to work and work and work. And then at the end of your life, if you had lived that perfect sinless life, you could go to heaven. The first day of the week, Sunday, is how it is under grace. We receive Christ now. We're saved now. And we work the rest of our lives because we are saved. So, while the Lord doesn't tell us how often to assemble, the local church does that. The local church decides that. The Bible does tell us on what day to assemble. We are to assemble on Sunday, the first day of the the week. By doing that, we are commemorating and celebrating the Lord's resurrection. And every Sunday that you go to church, beloved, you ought to be thinking about the resurrection, the resurrection of Christ. And we are staying in tight. When we go to church on Sunday, we are staying intact that we are saved by grace, amazing grace, by God's amazing grace. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad you're saved? Saved unto good works, like Paul says in Ephesians. Saved to serve, to worship, to praise, to be a witness for him, and to show forth the love of Christ till he comes or until he calls us home. So, again, we worship on Sunday for these very reasons. I hope you got a blessing from this. I hope I, hope I didn't confuse you. It's very hard to do without the board. But I hope you understand. I hope you pictured in your mind uh, what we've been talking about. The days and what they symbolize. And I hope it will make you appreciate even more Sunday, the first day of the week. God bless you all. Thank you for listening. Have a great week. Remember the services uh, Sunday morning at uh, 11 o'clock and Sunday afternoon at 6 o'clock, Lord willing, and with God's help with this technology, we'll be on here uh, to preach the word. God bless you all. Thank you.